Welcome to another lecture. We want to look at the renal and body fluids, which has got to do with the kidney and its associated structures. I am Dr. Eric Edu. I'm with the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology of the School of Medical Sciences, University of Cape Coast. We want to start by looking at the introduction where we are going to compare the micrograph here with that of a drawing. Or for histology, our interest is usually micrographs. So when you look at this vertical section through the kidney, you want to compare that with this. It's always easier to start with the drawing or the gross anatomy because you can see that clearly. So that is the bean-shaped kidney, which has two major parts, the cortex and then the medulla. Now you have these pyramidal shaped structures that have the apex down here and then the base at the top. Those are the renal pyramids. Then in between the renal pyramids here and there, you find the renal columns. As you can see, they are like the columns or pillars of a building. Then the pointed portion of the renal pyramids are called the papillae. One is a papilla. Then you can see the collecting system where you have the minor calyces followed by the major calyx and the renal pelvis and then the ureter. So we want to just uh, superimpose our knowledge of the drawing here. So you can tell that is a very strong basophilic area, which is the cortex labeled as C. Then you have in the inner portion, the medulla. And you can see the papilla, one of it labeled here. There's another one there, there's another one there. So that should be a renal pyramid. Then you have the collecting system here because they are uh, empty and luminal. They are not taking too much of the steam. So that is how it will appear. So from minor calyx, major calyx, pelvis, renal pelvis, and then the ureter. That is the hilum, the kidney. So this just emphasis on the renal columns. So what is a nephron? A nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. It is made up of the renal corpuscle and then the renal tubules. The renal corpuscle is also made up of the Bowman's capsule, which is simple squamous epithelium and then the glomerulus. Then you have the renal tubules consisting of the prosma convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule, and then the collecting tubules. Now, this is the development of the renal corpus. So it has been covered in an embryology lecture on the kidney. So you can refer to that. But I quickly go through again. Here you have an inductive effect by the renal tubule on some mesenchyma tissues that surround this region and will make it an S-shaped structure, which will be invested with blood vessels and that will become a glomerulus. So that is a tubule that actually developed from the ureteric bud. Okay, and that causes the mesenchyma tissues here, which actually are part of the metanephrogenic blastema. Okay, so that will influence those tissues, which are not shown here, to form an S-shaped structure, which will be invested with the blood vessels through angiogenesis and vasculogenesis. 
and that airship structure is going to form the Bowman's capsule together with the glomerulus. Okay, then that is going to form the renal corpuscle. Now, because this uh, tubo invaginates, it ends up having two layers. One is um, an inner layer, and then the other is the outer layer. So uh, we call the inner layer the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule, and then the outer layer is the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. So we have visceral layer, parietal layer. The visceral layer usually undergoes some differentiation, okay, to become a podocyte. The space between the visceral and parietal layers are known as the capsular space or the urinary space. So we are talking of this region, capsular space or the urinary space. And therefore, this region will be called the urinary pool, and then this will become the vascular pool. Because the urine is usually collected at this portion, that is why we call it the urinary pool. And because the blood vessels, afferent and efferent fibers are concentrated at this region, we call that the vascular pool. The afferent arterial supplies the glomerulus and the efferent arterials drain it. And the two enter and live at the corpuscle at the vascular pool. The opposite is called the urinary pool, as I have said already. The filtration barrier between the capillary lumen and Bowman's space will therefore consist of the capillary endothelium, the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule, and then the basement membrane of the two of them. I'll go over again. The layers through which filtration will occur, where the ultra filtrate will therefore be the product after the filtration. We want to say that before you get the uh, urine, the stages or layers through which the substance from the blood will pass, okay, and be filtered in order to get your urine, will go through the capillary endothelium, which means the glomeruli. There are capillaries at this point. So it will pass through their endothelium, which is their lining epithelium. Then it will also pass through the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. Now we are going to call the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule the podocyte, because I told you it will differentiate to go through a special differentiate, differentiation to become um, a podocyte. So it becomes closely associated with the endothelium of the capillary. Then you have the basement membrane of the endothelium, that is the capillary, and then the basement membrane of the podocyte, because both of them are epithelia, and definitely epithelial cells sit on basement membrane. So the two basement membranes will also be uh, part of the layers that the ultra uh, filtrate product will have to cross. So this is a scanning electron micrograph showing how the afferent and efferent uh, blood vessels, afferent arterial, efferent arterial, look like and that is the glomeruli okay so you can see this is one this is the other looking at the dimensions of the weights you should be able to tell which one is afferent and which one is efferent you know that the afferent has a larger diameter than the efferent to help in creating hydrostatic pressure to allow for ultra filtration to occur the collecting tube is a straight terminal portion of the nephron. Several collecting tubules converge to form the collecting duct. So you have these as collecting tubules. So those are collecting tubules. Yeah. 
you have some also here. Then several of these collecting tubules will join to form the collecting that. So you can see this is joining, that is joining, that is joining, that is also joining. Then they form the collecting duct. That is the plasma convoluted tubule. That is the distal convoluted tubule. And that is the, the loop of Henle, which contains the descending limb and then the ascending limb. The collecting duct descend to the cortex in parallel bundles called medullary rays. So note that we will come to that when we are looking at the micrographs. But um, essentially, they are just the straight lines that are formed due to the descending nature of those tubules. They also merge in the medulla to form the large duct of Bellini, which open into the pelvic calcium system. Okay, so to open into the pelvic calcium system here. <clears throat> 